Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to the A Little Less Fear podcast. I am your host for the show, Dr. Lino Martinez. Oh yeah. Welcome back, everybody, to the A Little Less Fear podcast. I am really happy to introduce Teza Lord. What an amazing name and an amazing <laughs> profile that Teza has. Teza has. Wow, a she pirate. You're the first she pirate I meet. <laughs> Better watch out or I'll chop your head off. <laughs> oh, I know. What a description that is. <laughs> Lifelong yoga and meditation practitioner, adventure, nature freak. Spreading love is her thing. And my thing, too, by the way. I love spreading love. Defines yes. the dark and negative is her aim with strong arrows. Um, she's a podcaster, a mesmerizer. <laughs> she could check out her YouTube channel if you have any mind stillers or for a mind stiller, right? Yes, I call my meditation mind stillers. I like that, mind stiller. <laughs> mind stiller, yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. She helps others uplift after having freed herself from the bonds of disappointment. Welcome to the A Little Less Fear podcast. Thank you for sharing your love, your energy, and your spirituality. We are aligned together for a reason today. Thank you for your connection. Well, I am glad to be here and, and, and welcome also to everybody who's listening because we are all connected. We are brothers and sisters and just shipmates. <laughs> oh, yes, we are. Absolutely. So tell us about your journey. How did you get onto this incredible journey of yours? I, I think I was born with this adventure streak. Everybody tried to tame me and beat it out of me, but it didn't work. I started running away from my birth home at a very early age. And I actually, I remember graduating from high school. I just waved to everybody and I just ran out after I got my diploma and hopped on a bus and never went back. Well, that's basically because the family I was born into was pretty dysfunctional. And I never found solace. I never found the joy, the bliss, the love uh, that I knew was out there just intuitively. So I just went on a search for it and I went sailing. I went to the Caribbean. I, I'm uh, in my 70s and I was a young person during the Vietnam era. So wow. everybody said, love it or leave it. So I left. And I want to say right here, if anybody has a hard time with what's going on in this world, Go out and travel, because when you see what's really happening out in the world, you will appreciate what's happening here in our domestic situation with America. This is an amazing country, and we are so fortunate to be citizens. And I know other people listen around the world, but America has a bad reputation. And the way to find out really what America is all about is to leave it and go travel. So um, I, I spent the whole 70s away from America. I lived in, and worked and sailed in the Caribbean, the West Indies. Then I went to the Middle East. I spent a year living in Israel and I traveled a lot in South America. And, and then I met the love of my life and became a parent to two young kids, a stepmom. And that became my journey, my, my adventure. At the age of 44, I married. Wow. That's and became my age, I'm 42, that's amazing. I know, I never thought I would meet my soul match uh, because I'm, I'm a multi-personality person. I thought I would have to have a harem and whoever heard of a woman having a harem. Yeah, right. But I, <laughs> but I met my husband, Carter Lord, who's a filmmaker. And he's like a, a 13 man person. He's got all sorts of different aspects. And together we are the Z Lord podcast. So we, we have conversations and it's really a hoot because we come from two different aspects. Of, and, and oftentimes we have like little mini fights, but we always work it out because we, the thing we share is the love of spirit. And when people have that as their connection, it doesn't matter about all the little incidentals. It always works out because that's the highest, the highest choice there is in life. So that's how I got here. Love for spirit, <laughs> Teza. What, what specific, could you, could you give us a little bit more info on that? Well, spirit has many names. I mean, some people ascribe spirit to a sensation within or nature or their religion or their path. It has many definitions, like Joseph Campbell wrote a book called 
uh, the hero with a thousand names. And that's just a, a different way of saying that spirit or the power within the source of our existence has so many different ways of being called. It doesn't matter what you call it, but it's a sensation of feeling connected with one, one feeling, which is love, which is the opposite of fear. That's why I was so attracted to being on your podcast because Thank I'm you. a love junkie. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. Yeah. And so it doesn't matter if somebody finds spirit or oneness or that joy or that bliss in their own little way, uh, as opposed to another person's way. There are many different variations of the way you can make a pie. So the main thing is, is to be in that elevated state of love and to absolutely recognize when fear comes in and choose to not buy into that because you cannot live in a state of love when you are in the state of fear. You just can't. Right, they cannot coexist. That's correct. Right. So you have to choose. And when the day came, when I realized that I could choose, which I was not aware of until I finally faced the fact that I was an addict. My story has a lot to do with uh, drugs, alcohol, mind-altering plant medicines, they call it. You know, I was a I was totally into expanding my consciousness through LSD, peyote, mescaline, everything. Uh, I was a botanical illustrator at um, Harvard University. So I had access to a lot of really inside information about mind expanding stuff, because that's where Leary came from. <laughs> Leary and Alpert, who became Baba Ramdas. And I basically took the route of Richard Alpert, who became Baba Ramdas. And he just said, no more substances. I'm going to access this incredible energy within using meditative uh, techniques. So that's the route that I finally took. Yeah, that's really amazing. You know, one thing, um, I have a genetic <laughs> disease. And one thing I found that helped me, I, I don't do with, the, I, I don't like being on too many medications. And the only plant-based medication that has helped me was marijuana. But recently, um, I've, I've come to the realization that the amount of love that I feel when I'm centered and aligned with my higher self, it, it there's no pain when I'm in that, when I'm in that zone and yes. I don't even need marijuana at that point. So recently I've, I've, I'm like, am I doing this now out of boredom? <laughs> because I'm not finding that it's really helping me the way, the way it, I get the same help with the higher, my higher self when I'm meditating and connecting with other energies. And I'm actually starting to tiptoe my way out of, out of marijuana and it's quite an incredible feeling mm -hmm. it's not even a i'm gonna miss it it's none of that it's more of a different connection that i have with the higher with my higher self that's feeling that much more better well i'm an old pothead and i can talk to you about that because definitely thc is different than cbd i right now i'm nursing a broken femur and i am taking cbd for pain and, uh, you know, you have anxiety also when you have uh, such a trauma happening as a broken femur. It's called a femoral hip fracture. It was a terrible thing. Yeah, it's changed cool. my life. But I'm in my fourth month of recovery. And today I don't even have a cane, which is also the miracle of being a lifelong yogi. I have done yoga. Yeah. And now I do broke sure. leg yoga. <laughs> <laughs> but CBD is... Uh, they have done recent studies. I love my CBD, PT, by the way. Yeah. My, my, yeah, my PT person is very, very hip to the latest um, findings. He's a PhD PT person. And Big Pharma doesn't want the world to know. But mm -hmm. CBD has the same effect as the opioids do on your nervous system and the pain-relieving qualities. Without the addictive but, properties. But Big Pharma doesn't want the rest of the world to know because, of course, they would lose millions. Right. So, but... Um, THC is a different matter. THC alters your consciousness. And if you're truly trying to tap into this state of divine love, sacred yes. oneness, I am. The, the aspect of altering your consciousness, which THC does, prevents you from really tapping that true nature of nature. oneness. Yeah, it, it creates a block. And you can test it yourself. Like, like get high and then try to meditate. It's impossible. Because it distorts time, it, it distorts dimensions, and it, it's something that ordinarily takes 30 seconds seems like it's taking 30 minutes. It just <laughs> distorts things. <laughs> yeah. 
right. which is okay if you're partying and you're having a great time and you know that's what you want to do but if you're seriously trying to tap into that inner source of love within which is why we meditate Right. We want to nurture that connection so that it becomes part of our everyday consciousness. Yeah. Well, then the THC aspect of marijuana will prevent you from really tapping that. I agree with you on that. Thank you for sharing, by the way. Yeah. And like, you know, I speak from an old pothead. I mean, I, when I finally realized that that was true, I cried. I said, my friend, marijuana. <laughs> you know, like, but it was preventing me from having that deep intimate connection with having god consciousness cosmic consciousness as part of my consciousness my humanness it was just putting a brick wall there so you can test it yourself i have tested it and that's how i know yes right can you talk a little bit more about cosmic consciousness well i remember the first time i felt it was as a child i think all of us are born with that connection because we come from the source. That's why children are so much cheerier than adults because they're that much closer to having come from the source. And little by little, they learn either through their you know, upbringing or whatever their experiences are, and they begin to have fear. And the ego starts to really become stronger than that God consciousness part of ourselves, which all of us have. Now, it may not be called cosmic consciousness or God consciousness. Some people call it the chi. In yoga, it's called prana, the source of life. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is innate in all of us. And it's that place that we get to when we stop the wheels of useless thinking. So, of course, if we want to think about something like, let's say we're studying to be like a psychologist and you're in your respect, you want to use your thinking power so you can pass exams and to get licensed. And so you can actually be there with a, with a diploma saying that you mm -hmm. are an official psychologist. But to tap into cosmic consciousness, you have to learn to stop the wheels of rational thought, which is basically, I believe, using the right side of your brain rather than the left side. Mm -hmm. And of course, we want to keep both sides of our brain clear. Like um, th there was a wonderful explanation of it in the talk on the TED talk where the woman had a stroke on the yes, left I saw that one was incredible. She explained as a scientist what it's like to tap into cosmic consciousness, mm -hmm. God consciousness, and she was studying the brain. It was called something like my stroke of good fortune because she discovered cosmic consciousness, God consciousness, and, and love. She was just filled with love, but oh, she forgot what numbers are. She couldn't make a phone call because she was so filled with love because the right side of her brain was in, was in full control. The left side of her brain, which is the rational thought, had been unfortunately stroked out, but she had a full recovery. And she gave this lovely talk that has inspired so many people. And that's really what it's like. You have to train your mind to not go into what I call the racka racka -roo. You can just go and spin your wheels or the Buddhists call it monkey mind. Right. So my meditation teacher said, you want to feed your monkey mind a banana. <laughs> <laughs> right. You, you want to give it the banana in, in the case that I uh, use as a banana is a mantra, a sacred mantra. So I've trained my mind to repeat the sound of a sacred mantra, which itself is in verbal form, cosmic consciousness, like Om, mm -hmm. the, the simple mantra Om. You know, this isn't just something somebody made up. The ancient sages who wrote the Upanishads, which are some of the oldest scriptures in the world. Some people say it's older than the Bible, the Old Testament. Some people uh, you know, it's not clear really if it's older than the Old Testament or not. But the sages who wrote the Upanishads, they talk about Om being the sound of creation, the sound of God. And that is the yeah, very bait. It's called the seed mantra. What's even what's interesting about the Om is when I repeat that mantra or even just play it on YouTube, my cats react to it. It's really amazing. I mean, it's like 
it's like it's like they've heard it before and they're focused and they they like it they're not afraid of it they're very uh attracted to it and i also saw yes. this video on youtube where there was this this man holding his newborn baby that wouldn't stop crying i mean like days old oh, newborn i saw that i yeah, saw he that owned it and he was just and the baby just stopped crying yeah what an, what it's an amazing so magical video. it's beautiful it is it is truly magical whenever i go to a place that really moves me. Usually it's in the wild, it's nature. My husband and I just love to om. And the true way you pronounce it in Sanskrit is even longer than om. It's aum. It's got yeah. three syllables. Aum. And so yeah. we just like burst out with these big aums. And, and after you do a, a round of those, you're in a very still place, very, very still. Do you start to attract animals around you when that happens as well? Well, you know, once <laughs> I was at this meditation retreat and a little bird landed on the top of my head. What? I thought, well, Darling. I, I thought, wow, this is so special. And I just felt its little feet. It was like, you know, just, <laughs> just doing, it was doing a little dance. I, and, and, and then <laughs> the next day it came again. Wow. And, I, the, but the best thing with OM is I attracted a whole pod of dolphins to come to me. Whoa. This is, this is my last book. I, I've written four books. The last book is called Hybrid Vigor, which is about what animals teach us. And it starts off, Hybrid Vigor does, by my calling in with the silent mantra, just psychically sending out the mantra, not even making the sound. And first there was a scout. You know, you could see the little fin peeping up. <laughs> it checked me out. And then the whole pod came, like 30 or 40. And we just played together for hours. That's amazing. <laughs> that's what a beautiful experience that must have been. Yeah, that's how powerful sacred mantras are. You don't even have to speak them. But your mind becomes attuned to this different vibration. So that's cosmic consciousness. It's sending out the same vibration as the galaxies and the mm -hmm. far off things they're discovering. Today, they, they discovered, they took a picture of another black hole. There's two black holes in, in our universe, and I've got them up on my wall. And today was the picture of the second one, which is astounding that they're discovering. And I bet you if they had a microscope there, a, 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 a microphone, they would hear the sound of ohm in space. I, I, I can believe it. You know, I interviewed um, Dr. T, who is a spiritual healer, and he was telling me that when he meditates amongst the trees, he can hear the trees singing. And that was amazing. I'd never, and then his wife heard it. And I'm just like, I've never had that experience. And I'm, I, I want to have that experience. I can't even imagine how beautiful that is. Right. You know, trees are so sacred, and they have such vitality. And they give us their gift of their scent, their vibration, their energy, their sound, their nutrients. It's wonderful to spend time with trees. Absolutely. I find that um, I find myself not feeling grounded unless I take a walk and have my hands touch the ground or my feet touch the ground. And that's when I really start to feel the oneness and I feel that um, I was missing that for a long time in my life. And it's, it, it just, it, I, I really feel, and I, and I hope that coming in the near future, and I do believe this is going to happen because I'm noticing that there's a lot of people half my age that are catching on now. Mm -hmm. There's got to be more of a spiritual illumination going on in college campuses. And I feel that universities are lacking that. Like, how about a little, how about a requirement of a class on how to connect with earth, with mother nature? And that's really what people are missing with their mental health and everything is that connection with oneness, as you're saying, the divine connection. Yeah. I, even younger, I think kids should be taught how to calm and, and tune into oneness, yes. whether it's through nature or through mantra or, you know, I taught yoga and meditation to girls in prison. That was the very first of my nonfiction books. It's called In the Eye, meaning me, myself and I. And I, I just had to volunteer to, to give these techniques of stillness to very, very disturbed, you know, gang girls, drug girls, you know. I mean, I related to them because I'm the she pirate. 
<laughs> yeah, you are so, the sheep so, pirate. So, so I said to them, hey, if I could do it, you can do it. And their jaws dropped. I said, the only difference between you and me is you did, you got caught a lot earlier than I did. <laughs> 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 and, and that really is what it's all about. Because when you are a thrill seeker, like usually a criminal type of person or a drug addict type of person, or even a gang person, they're looking for thrills. But the biggest thrill of all is to tap into cosmic consciousness, yes. that, that oneness within. That is the most astounding thrill there is. And it's right within us all the time if we can just learn to tap it. Mm -hmm. So it's good to have teachers. It's good to know about good books or YouTube people or, you know, anybody or podcasts. And that's why so many of us are doing this work. I mean, the amount of spiritual podcasts now is astounding. Oh, I know. That was it's phenomenal. Would you consider yourself a, a spirit healer or a spirit advisor? Or? No, I'm just a person who, who acknowledges that I live in spirit. You know, and everybody is a spiritual, psychic healer, whatever. Yes. And I fortunately do not need to do that because... I, yes, I can heal people if I want by, you know, using pressure points or talking or sharing techniques. But the, I, I think it's kind of hokey for people to do that because we're all psychic healers. We're all capable of that kind of powerful healing, self-healing first, and then to give it to others. And so there's a little bit of a separation thing when people hang out their shingle saying, psychic healer. Well, okay, we all are psychic healers. We all can tap into like psychic abilities. It's just a matter of do you want to or not? And some people don't even know yet that they have the choice. And they, once you have a choice, well, then you have to start pumping your psychic muscles like you would if you wanted strong abs or a strong bicep. You go to the gym. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be a psychic healer, if you want to heal yourself first, you know, people know now that they have to get out of their ego. They've got to stop thinking so much and get into the quiet, still space like the trees and like nature. And then you tap into your own inner power. Yes. Wow. Incredible. I did use psychics at one point in my life and astrologers, but I finally got to the place where I said, hmm, you know, I know within i have all the answers of my situation i learned how to tap that psychic connection myself and anytime i had a question or needed guidance i could tune in and and get the answers myself that's beautiful Tiza. thank you yeah thank you it so is beautiful sharing. so what's yeah. your podcast about what's your podcast on and how can we well, find your podcast well the podcast is z lord podcast it's where all podcasts are z lord z lord yeah I love that's, that. how I, that's how i signed my painting so i named it after myself oh, I but love my it. i know z is a teza i always uh, make it with a big capital z and small other letters and uh it was my very first email address z lord at aol.com so i've been <laughs> z lord forever and uh, since i married my husband and uh, as a matter of fact i got a um, an email a couple years ago when we started podcasting and and this dude wrote me and said hey i'm z lord i've got yeah. a rapper and i'm z lord <laughs> so I, said, I said hey dude i've been z lord like you know since aol started so i mean i had proof i can show you my old emails i didn't yeah. rip you off but he wanted to challenge me because he he wanted that name i Aww. said hey the world's the world's big enough for a couple z lords sure <laughs> it yeah. was funny that is kind of funny <laughs> yeah it was funny but our podcast is uh before the pandemic we we love to to travel and so we went off on a six-month camping trip all over canada all over the great northwest of america coming down the, the west coast and ending up in um texas the, a place called big ben and so we podcasted because i said to my husband carter you know, this is an art form and we're both artists. He's a filmmaker and I'm a visual artist and an author. We need to share with the world. So it started off as a, an adventure of our travels. Then the pandemic started and I said, we need to continue on the inner adventure because there's so much happening inside. 
all these issues that come up, especially because we were in lockdown. We we hardly went anywhere for a long time, I'm sure, like the rest of the world. Right. And, and so we just had topics. We didn't have guests because we record using an iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> And and then we just went camping again. We we spent a couple of weeks in Arizona, checking out um, where the Apaches ended up with their story in in southeast uh, Arizona. So wherever we go, we can we can podcast because our equipment is very portable. That's amazing. Yes, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. So, how can our viewers, our watchers, and our listeners find you? Well, I have a great website with the beautiful name of tezalord.com. And that's spelled T-E-Z-A-L-O-R-D. Yeah. And please do sign up, people, and join my army of love. That's what I call my tribe. Because we we need to be warriors who shoot the illumination of love. That is how the world is going to be transformed. So my motto is love is the weapon of mass illumination. Yes, it is. Hey, one more question, Tisa. I've, I've been noticing lately, like within the last two years, that people are starting to have more of a conscious illumination. Are you are you noticing that having oh, yeah. in your 70s and seeing all these yeah. generations? Do you see more of an awakening happening? Well, it really started more than two years ago. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of the harmonic convergence, no. which happened in 1987. Okay. What year were you born? 80. Okay, 1987, we had a worldwide celebration of people who were connected with this arisen consciousness, this awakened consciousness. And it was organized in a worldwide fashion, and I was a participant. Ceremonies were taking place all around the world because that signified the symbolic change of the chance, the transformation of human consciousness that had been predicted by several sources like Nostradamus and the Mayan calendar and different references throughout history have said something's going to happen in 1987. And what it is, is that's the tipping point. The tipping point arrived in 1987. And what you're seeing now is like way past when the amount of people who are awakened has superseded the amount of people who are still asleep. Oh, yes. So we are in the midst of a major shift. The human race is being spiritualized while we speak. And I feel it and I see it and I'm looking forward to more. And I'm so glad to be part of this illumination journey, this awakening. And I'm really grateful that I got to have you on a little less your podcast. Thank you for sharing your love, your light, your energy. And I hope to connect with you soon. Thank you so much, Teza. Yes, thank thank you for having me in any time. Just I love to share love. Absolutely. Likewise. Namaste to you. Thank you so much. Namaste. Yes, have a beautiful rest of the day. I will. You too. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to A Little Less Fear podcast. For more information on my social media pages, you can visit me at www.alittlelessfear.com. I also have an incredible list of resources for people all over the world and it's it's really formulated to help all kinds of people lgbtqia community alcohol alcoholics anonymous um i mean disabilities i mean the list goes on so feel free to visit my website a little less fear.com you can also email me at a little less fear gmail.com i'm also on patreon i'm a life purpose counselor on patreon for uh, this is available for everybody and it's also available for only exclusive members on patreon everybody's welcome so please visit me there at www.patreon.com backslash a little less fear thank you to all the new followers and subscribers go ahead and hit the follow subscribe button if you haven't already and tell your friends and family about a little less fear podcast thanks so much for all your support love you all have a blessed day